In this video, we will learn the CVP insertion procedure with a subclavian vein approach. For understanding the approach, we need to understand basic anatomy within few seconds, so let's get started. Here, a 3D anatomical model from BioDigital which is an amazing platform for learning with interactive 3D videos, we are looking at the clavicle and subclavian vein. First, the clavicle is the primary surface landmark for subclavian cannulation. Moving laterally from the suprasternal notch, the bulky sternal head takes an elongated S shape. The anterior convexity at the junction of the medial and middle thirds is known as the bend or break in the clavicle, which is our landmark. The insertion point is exactly below but and posterior to clavicle and superiorly. So let's look at the procedure. Step 1, swab a broad area of skin with antiseptic solution, encompassing the entire clavicular area, as well as the side of the neck and anterior chest to below the ipsilateral nipple and place sterile towels around the site. Place the tip of your index finger of the hand closest to the head of the bed on the sternal notch and your thumb at the midpoint of the clavicle. Insert procedural needles immediately inferior to to the clavicular midpoint. Next, place a wheel of anesthetic at the needle entry site and then inject anesthetic into the skin and soft tissues along the anticipated needle insertion path. Maintain gentle negative pressure on the syringe plunger as you advance. Insert the introducer needle, or, optionally, a finder needle, with the bevel facing along the needle insertion path. Maintain gentle negative pressure on the syringe plunger as you advance the needle. Stop advancing when a flash of blood appears in the barrel of the syringe. Hold the syringe motionless in this spot. Even a slight movement may displace the needle tip from the vein. Carefully rotate the introducer syringe such that the bevel of the needle now faces inferiorly. Insert the J-curved end of the guide wire into the introducer needle, with the J-curve facing inferiorly, in the same direction as the needle bevel. Advance the guide wire through the needle and into the vein. Do not force the wire, it should slide smoothly. Advance the wire 20 cm or until ectopic heartbeats occur, withdraw from this point until ectopy stops. First, securely hold the guide wire distal to the needle and pull the needle from the skin. Then, securely hold the guide wire at the skin surface and slide the needle down the remaining length of the guide wire to remove the needle. Advance the catheter over the guide wire to the skin surface, hold the guide wire fixed at the skin surface, thread the catheter tip over the distal end of the guide wire, and slide the catheter down to the skin surface. Continue to advance the catheter into the vein, grasp and control the guide wire where it protrudes from the hub. Hold the catheter near its tip and insert the tip through the skin. Maintain your grasp on both the guide wire and the catheter. Using the scalpel, make a small stab incision, about 4 mm, into the skin insertion site, avoiding contact with the guide wire, 
to enlarge the site and allow it to accommodate the larger diameters of the tissue dilator and the catheter. Remove the guide wire, withdraw the guide wire while holding the catheter securely in place at the skin surface. Flush each catheter port with saline, first, draw any air from the line and confirm venous blood flow into the hub. Suture the skin to the mounting clip on the catheter. To prevent pulling on the insertion site, suture the catheter at a second site so that a curved or looped segment of catheter lies between the two sites. Apply a sterile occlusive dressing. Transparent membrane dressings are commonly used, and that's it, we are done. To learn more, please subscribe and support us, thank you.